actually you have uh, already uh, know what do you mean by simultaneous equation system and uh, how you identify the system and what are the exact condition needed for uh, solving the model. Today what I will do, I will basically give some example from the real life situation to let you know how the model works and how do you actually identify the parameters of the model and what are the necessary condition so that you end up with a meaningful solution. Now, in the last class I have discussed the augmented Dickey Fuller test to carry out the test for uh, unit root and I have also discussed the preliminary version of augmented Dickey Fuller test which is known in the literature as Dickey Fuller test and the, there are in the li some literature are available on unit root test. For example, Phillips and Perron have developed a more comprehensive theory of unit root non-specialty. The test are similar to ADF test, but they incorporate an automatic correction to the Dickey Fuller procedure to allow for orthocorrelated residual. The test usually give the same conclusion as that of the ADF test. Now, come to the main criticisms of the test. The main criticisms there is that the power of the test is low if the process is stationary, but with a root close to non-stationarity boundary. For example, the tests are poor at, at deciding if phi equal to 1 or phi equal to 0 0.95, especially with small sample size. If the true data generating process is say for example, yt equal to 0 0.95 yt minus 1 plus ut, then the null hypothesis of a unit root should be rejected. One way to get around this is to use a stationarity test as well as the unit root test. We have looked at h naught yt is a stationary versus h1 yt is non-stationarity so that by default under the null the data will appear stationarity. Once another test which is at available in the literature is the KPSS test and these tests are also we see very useful and so one can apply KPSS test for checking stationarity of the data as well. Now in a univariate as I have already discussed in a univariate non-stationarity the time series yt is said to be integrated of order d id if it is d minus 1 at if its d minus 1 at difference is non-stationary non but d at difference is stationary. So that basically implies you have to take d at time differences in order to obtain stationarity. Now if yt is non-stationary non but delta yt equal to i minus dyt is stationary, then the series is integrated of order 1. So, it, yt follows i1, but delta yt follows i0. So, after defining the concept of integrated series, let us and have an idea of cointegration. In most of the cases, uh, the two, if we combine two variables which are i1, then the combination will also be a i1. More generally, if we combine variables with differing orders of integration, the combination will have an order of integration equal to the largest. That is, if i or x i t follows i i d i i running from 1 to k, so that we can have k we can have k variables each integrated of order d i, and you can take the weighted average of those integrated series and then Zd will be integrated of maximum i d i and Z i is a linear combination of the k variables x i. Now, rearranging we can get x i t x 1 i t as in some of the coefficients of all integrated of order series x i and accordingly define the uh, coefficients and the term and this is just, just a regression. But the disturbance term of this equation have very undesirable property that the prime is not stationary and is autocorrelated if all the x t's are i 1. 
So, we want to ensure that the disturbances are I 0 and what circumstances will be uh, the case. So, this gives an idea of co-integration, two series are said to be, two or more series is said to be co-integrated if you, you have this regression uh, of y t x 2 and x 3 where each of these uh, y t x t are i 1 variable and if you obtain the residual that is u t equal to y t minus beta 1 beta 2 x 2 t minus beta 3 x 3 p and u t should be integrated of order 0 if the variable of the model are co-integrated. So, in order to have the co-integration, what we need to ensure, suppose you have three variable y t, x t and x 2 and x 3 and all of these are integrated of order 1, then you regress y t on x 2 and x 3 and obtain the residual y t minus beta 1 minus beta 2 x 2 minus beta 3 x 3. Now, check then check whether u t should follow an integrated series of order 0. And if the variable are integrated of, of g, g order 0, then and only then you can say that the series are co-integrated. So, now consider the case of two variable model. In a two variable case, if y t is integrated of order 1 and x t is also integrated of order 1, then y t and x t will be said to be co-integrated if u t equal to y t minus beta x t is integrated of order 0. So, basically in order to test for co-integration, you have to apply for unit root in three steps. First of all, you have to test for whether y t follows i 1. This will be carried out by performing a unit root test on y t. Then you have to test for whether x t follows an i 1. This will also be carried out by applying unit root test on x t. Then if you find that y t and x t and are co-integrated uh, are integrated of order 1, then you just regress y t and x t or regress x y t on x t and have the residual u t equal to u t hat equal to y t minus beta hat x t and then apply unit root test on the variable u t. Now, if you find that u t series uh, follows a i 0 series that is it is integrated of order 0, then you say that the y t series and x t series are co-integrated. Now, come to the general case, you consider m cross 1 vector time series of y t and another uh, series me have the layer, let, let us have the idea of co-integration for the general case and m by 1 vector of time series y t, y t is said to be co-integrated of order d d where 0 is less than d is less than d if each of the component of y i t is i d, but sum of the linear combination of the series y is i d minus v for non-zero constant vector alpha. Alpha is the co-integrating vector or the long run parameter and it is not unique. The most common case where d equal to b equal to 1 that I have already discussed. Now, if you support the idea of co-integration that basically implies you the series y t and x t move together and in many time series and non stationary now uh, note that y t follows i 1 and x t follows i 1. So, both y t series and x t series are non stationarity non stationary but you are combining the two non stationary series in such a way the resultant series are uh, non -st are stationary series so that the residual uh, residual of this regression ut follows i0 now in many time series you find non stationarity uh, non stationary series but non stationary series move together if variable are co-integrated it means that a linear combination of them will be a 
सिर्फ मे बी सीरीज एंड ए को इंटीग्रेटिंग रिलेशनशिप मे ऑल्सो बी ए सी मे मे ऑल्सो बी नोन एज लॉन्ग रन रिलेशनशिप सो इफ यू सपोर्ट दी आइडिया ऑफ को इंटीग्रेशन और इफ यू सपोर्ट दी हाइपोथेसिस ऑफ को इंटीग्रेशन सपोज यू हैव को इंटीग्रेटेड को इंटीग्रेटिंग रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन वाई टी एंड एक्स टी देन यू से दैट बोथ वाई टी सीरीज एंड एक्स टी सीरीज आर इंटीग्रेटेड ऑफ ऑर्डर जीरो आर इंटीग्रेटेड ऑफ ऑर्डर जीरो एंड दैट इज दे आर स्टेशनरी सीरीज so that basically implies yt series and xt series move together and you can find some equilibrium relationship between yt and xt now there are many economic example of co integration for example there are co movement between spot price and future price and relative prices and exchange rate equity price and dividend so in the literature you can find many variables which move together um, with one another and you support the, the case of cointrigation now suppose you justify the existence of cointrigation and when the concept of non stationarity was first introduced a usual response was independently take the first differences of the series as i1 variable now problem with this approach is that pure first differences model have no long run solution for example if we consider yt and xt which are both i1 and then model in the model we may write delta yt equal to beta times delta xt plus ut but this collapses to nothing in the long run and this definition of the long run that we see is where yt equal to y xt minus or yt minus 1 is equal to y xt minus x t equal to x t minus one equal to x. Hence, all the difference term will be zero, and delta y t equal to zero, and delta x t will be equal to zero. So, one way to get around to this problem is to use first differences and the levels terms. That is, uh, you can have delta y t as a function of delta x t plus beta two times y t minus gamma x t minus 1 and this term is very very crucial for the error correction model and this in the literature is known as error correction model. So, y t minus gamma x t minus 1 is the error correction term. So, if for example, if you support the cointrigation relationship what we claim you have the long run relationship between y t and x t. In that case, if you perturb the equilibrium relationship by some exogenous shocks, since there exist equilibrium relation that basically implies it will ultimately come back to equilibrium and as a result there will be some endogenous error correction to the system and which is known in the literature error correction model. So, there will be some forces will be corrected automatically and will bring back the system to an equilibrium because in the beginning you claim that you have an equilibrium relationship or a long run co integrating relationship. So, uh, y t minus 1 minus gamma x t minus 1 in the literature is known as error correction term provided that the y t and x t are co integrated with co integrating coefficient gamma then y t minus gamma x t minus 1 will be i 0 even though the constitutive original y t and x t are i 1. So, here you can see that you can have ordinary regression on um, equation 2 where delta y t is a function of delta x t and the error correction term because all of the delta y t delta x t as well as error correction term are uh, of i 0 integrated series of order 0. This is known as Granzer representation theorem and the Granzer the representation theorem shows that the co integrating relationship can be expressed as a error correction model. So, what is what the basic idea of Granzer representation theorem? The Granzer representation theorem basically shows that if you support the idea of co integration then that will be represented by an error correction mechanism. That is there will be an 
automatic error correction process to the system that will bring back y t and x t to the equilibrium relationship or coindicating relationship if there occur any automatic shock to the model. So, providing that y t and x t are coindicated with in coindicating coefficient gamma, then ga y t minus gamma x t minus 1 will be i 0 even though the constituents are i 1. We can thus see that we can use OLS to 2. The Granger representation theorem shows that any coindicating relationship can be expressed as an equilibrium error correction model. So, for the k variable case y t equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x t minus x 2 t plus beta 3 x t plus q t. So, u t will be i 0 if the variables are coindicated, and you obtain residual of the regression and if you see that these residual of the regression follows i 0 and then you say that you have a coindicating relationship. And Engel and Granzer tabulated a new set of critical values and hence the test is known as Engel Granzer test. So, what are the null and the alternative hypothesis for the test and the residual for a potential coindicating relation? H0 unit root in the coindicating relation are residual and H1 residual from the coindicating relation are stationary. And you have you can perform Engel Granzer the two step method. In step 1 make sure all the individual variables are i 1, then estimate the coindicating relation by OLS, save the residual of the coindicating relation, test these residual to ensure that they are i 0 and in step 2 use the residual as one variable in the error correction model and obtain again perform the OLS regression and this is basically the estimation of error angel uh, granger two step methodology by applying error correction mechanism. In this lecture, I have discussed a very brief uh, idea about the phyllis Perron test and KPSS test which are used to test for stationarity of the time series that is the unit root test of the series and uh, then I will discuss, I have discussed the idea of integrated series and then I have discussed the idea of co-integration and both for the two variable case as well as multivariate case it will be discussed in the next classes. But uh, we have in this class I have discussed the angel granger methodology of two step co-integration testing for two step co-integration and the idea of error correction mechanism how you estimate the error correction mechanism uh, given the estimated co-integrating relationship of the model.